Where the dollars at? Where is the dollars? Hey, yo, we about to get in my video, so watch it, because it's off the hook. Watch how I stand bow-legged, and you know what I'm saying? I'm doing my thing. So get my album inquiring minds, because it's stores. It's off the Easy. Don't play. The hip-hop community just lost one of the biggest stars, Gangsta Boo. The rapper is considered one of the pioneers of female rap and is often referred to as the Queen of Memphis. Over the years, her status grew, but still, she was often overlooked as a Southern pioneer in her own right. Her standout debut, LP, Inquiring Minds, which contained the hit single, Where Them Dollars At, helped stamp Boo as a solo force and the hip-hop world embraced her. Boo's rap is considered a staple in Memphis. From local legends such as Tommy Wright, 8-Ball, and MJG, 3-6 Mafia, Yo Gotti, Don Tripp, and Young Dolph, they were all respected in the streets of Memphis long before they were introduced to the world through their music. Lola Mitchell was born in Memphis, Tennessee on August 7th, 1979. Lola was from a middle-class family, but later moved to the hood after her parents' divorce, she said. But I grew up pretty, really, I, I had a decent life. I'm not from, I'm not a project baby. Um, my parents was together, married up until I was like 13, 14, something like that. So I, I grew up pretty decent, like in a, in a good house. You just had ratchet friends. Ratchet friends, ratchet mama. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my dad was like a closet ratchet. And um, it's like, it's like North Memphis mixed with Orange Mountain, they had Gangsta Boo. But I grew up just, you know, just a normal childhood, but a little rough around the edges. Because Memphis, Memphis is rough. Right. Memphis is pretty rough. Her first love was poetry. According to Pitchfork, she began writing poetry at a very young age and gave her poems to her father. Her father saw her love for the art and bought her a keyboard and karaoke machine to practice. This gift went on to change her life and soon she became a pioneer for women in the rap industry. Lola started rapping at the age of 14 years old. Eventually, the teen started to perform her gift and at her high school talent show, she caught the attention of her then classmate, DJ. Paul. You know, I was young, like I was, I was back, I was like young, I'm young now, but I was like 14. Right. I joined the group when I was 14. Wow. Yeah, I was mostly like a little talent show rapper, like in mm -hmm. school and stuff. But yeah, I started with them when I was, yeah, 14. Well, how did you Mystic join Styles. Them? How'd they find you? A talent show. Oh, right. <laughs> DJ. But, but, Juicy, but Juicy used to, um, he was a DJ at our junior high school. Juicy but, was a DJ. What's DJ Paul? Well, both. Was Juicy actually used to DJ for A Ball MJG? Wow. He was like one of their backup DJs, too. DJ Paul had just formed a group called 3 Six Mafia. At first, 3 Six Mafia emerged as an underground hip hop group, but they quickly became one of the most influential groups in the industry. It was first formed by DJ Paul, his half brother Ricky, also known as Lord Infamous, and Juicy J. Jordan Houston. Lola told Complex Magazine in 2012 after DJ Paul took notice to her, he wanted her to get on a mixtape. So the teen took a chance and the record became very popular. Her sound led her to be requested on more 3 Six Mafia songs and soon she became a member. But anyway, we went to school together, but it's not like we knew each other. I was the, the girl that used to call people phones and rap on their answer machines and shit. So Lord Infamous recipes to him, that was Paul's mm, uncle. Cause Lord, mom is Paul's sister, so I end. He came up with three six mafia with Paul, so I end up finding his number. Was rapping on his answer machine all the time, and he told Paul that I can rap. One female never showed up to the studio. Then they called me, and then I showed up to the studio, and I never left the studio with them. Lola made appearances on three six mafia's first five albums, including their '95 debut record, Mystic Styles Chapter One, When the Smoke Clears, and Choices. She told Complex Magazine the first song she recorded with 36 Mafia as a member was when she was 15 years old. The song was called Chifa Darifa. The group recorded it in a tiny closet, but Lola considered it a tragedy. She said the whole song was about smoking bud, and in her later years, she said she got exposed to a lot in such a little time. Not long before being a part of the group, Lola had changed her name to Gangsta Boo. What's up? I'm Gangsta Boo with 36 Mafia. 
She was given her first gun at 16 by a member named Crunchy Black. Although she feared weapons, the rapper said she thanked him for teaching her how to stay protected during those times. Boo tried not to let distractions get to her, remained focused on her craft, and soon released her first solo album at 18 years old called Inquiring Minds in 1998. The album reached number 15 on the Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart and number 46 on Billboard 200. The album featured the surprise hit Where Them Dollars At that turned the local Memphis rapper into a hip hop star. However, when it became time to release her second album, Both Worlds, in 2001, Boo was almost done with the rap industry. She told MTV she no longer wanted to record records with the group if they wanted to present her as a sassy, foul mouthed sex star rapper. Although she was still signed to the group's label and recording, 3-6 Mafia DJ Paul said that Boo was going through a transformation, which later led her to leave the group. Outlets didn't know what was going on with 3-6 Mafia, being that they were all at the height of their career during that time. Outlets started to create their own narratives on what was happening within the group. The most popular narrative behind why the rapper parted ways with the band was drugs, financial disputes, and Boo having friction with members like Juicy J. It was also rumored that DJ Paul and Boo shared a passionate connection outside of music, but to this day, neither have confirmed or denied that narrative. What really led to you leaving the group? <laughs> Situations. But were you guys romantically involved? No, not me and Juicy. Hell no. You and Paul? I mean, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Did that cause some problems? Maybe. Maybe. But you know, um, I got a lot of love for Paul. Paul taught me a lot of things. I got a lot of his ways sometimes. And I think he's dope. He's DJing now. I think I think both of them dope. You know, I just, I don't f with who don't f with me. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I feel about Juicy. Ooh, ooh. And I'm sure that's not going to make or break him. I came in with Paul, with Crunchy, Coopster, Lord Infamous. I came on that side. Mm -hmm. So to me, they were both equally talented. I mean, they both did the beats. Okay. Like I say, Juicy got a writer, so... You know, and, and he wanted to do music. That's what he wanted to do. Paul wanted to do the cooking and the sauces. And hey, that's his money. I'm not knocking it. That's hey, nigga, you hustle. Hey, now he got the liquor, you know what I mean? The first uh, sparkling scissor champagne, you know what I mean? Yeah. Boo set the record straight in a November 2001 interview with MTV when she was asked if there was any problems between her and the band. She said no, there was no problem and sometimes people just grow apart. In that same interview, the rapper had said that she found God. 13 years later, when she sat down with Complex Magazine in 2014, she elaborated more on her conversion to Christianity. She told them that if she went back to reflect on her life and seeing that she needed to make some changes. Boo said by the time she turned 21 all the stuff that she did in the past caught up with her she didn't elaborate on those things but she said she was depressed and wasn't in her right mind when she was in the group she also said she was introduced to a substance that she was trying to let go of who was in search for some positive energy and light she said that she did bad things that she still regrets but couldn't change as a result she said she wanted to remove the preference gangsta from her name and that's why she renamed herself Lady Boo. Boo made it clear that she wasn't creating gospel music, just real relatable music in her way. And since her departure from the group, she continued to tour, record, and release music as a solo artist. That was until 2013 when she was asked on a conference call to rejoin the group. Initially, DJ Paul and his brother were going to do an album together. However, Lord Infamous didn't want to do the project without the whole group being together. They made their debut mixtape, Six Commandments, went on tour, but the group went their separate ways again the next year. Yet and still, Boo never stopped performing or recording. She continued to collaborate alongside La Chat, Eminem, Outkast, Foxy Brown, T.I., Gucci Mane, Yellow Wolf, and Drummer Boy, to name a few. Boo was also introduced to a new audience in 2021 when she was asked to join alongside 3 Sis Mafia during the pandemic at a versus battle with a fellow rap group named Bone Thugs and Harmony. Since that battle, Boo has gone viral countless times about her style and influence with the new generation of rappers. Rappers like Glorilla and Lotto called her one of their biggest inspirations, giving Boo her flowers while also collaborating with her. When I hear Queen of the South, I think of Autoqueen. 
Megan said stop. I think of Trina. I think of Megan Thee Stallion. I think of Gangsta Boo. I think of City Girls. Sadly, just months after getting her flowers from the younger generation, it was reported that the rapper was found deceased at her home. Being determined, and we are not here to speculate. Although this was very unexpected, in a 2012 interview, Boo did reveal how she wanted to be remembered. And we will be closing with that interview today. She said, I want people to know that I am a really hard worker. I'm human just like everybody else. I write all my own music. I've helped other people come up with concepts. I've helped put a lot of people on. I just want to be respected. When it's all said and done, I want to be remembered as Gangsta Boo from 3-6 Mafia, the first lady of 3-6 Mafia, the first lady of crunk music, the first lady who brought a platinum plaque back to Memphis, the first lady who brought a gold plaque back to Memphis. Gangsta Boo continued and said, I'm the only female rapper in Tennessee that has ever did that and probably I will be the only one that ever will. I just want to be known as someone that put her heart into her music and who really, really appreciates her fans. Because if it wasn't for my fans, like I said, I definitely would not still be doing this. My fans are my motivation. I love my fans. Gangsta Boo, give me a drop. Huh? Hey yo, peep this kid. It's Gangsta Boo. Buy my album in March. The world, Urban the new showcase. world order. That's what it is. The okay. new world order. Maybe. All rehearsed, baby. For me, me only. Triple six. Okay, and.